Hello, my name is Leopold Armesto and the aim of this video is to help you to identify links and joins in serial route manipulators. So in order to do that, I have prepared three simple demos based on the IRB140 uh, robot from ABB, uh, the UR3 uh, robot and also a scatter robot. These are models that are available in VREP, but I have modified them and, and adapted so you can, uh, or uh, it can be used for this uh, uh, purpose to identify links and joints, okay? But, so, let's start with uh, with this robot. So we have uh, the base of the robot, which is the fixed link. It's named link zero. And then we have uh, this joint here. It's a vertical joint, as you can see, that will be in charge of moving this first movable link, which is link one. It's painted in red. And then we have joint uh, two, which is that one here. It's a motor that it's horizontal. I mean, the, the, the axis is horizontal and uh, it's in charge of moving this second link here, the colored in green. And then we have joint three, which is that one. Okay. And we'll be move uh, this joint, uh, sorry, this link here, which is uh, the one in yellow. Okay. And uh, joints two and three are usually uh, horizontal and the first three joints of the robot are uh, of, or this robot in particular are designed to uh, control the position of the wrist point of the robot the wrist point is a point right here in the middle in which joints four five and six these joints four five and six intersect in a point here this is called an inline wrist and this is the wrist point and it's very important because with the first three joints we will be able to position this uh, point here but with the other joints we will we'll be able to orient it, or, uh, to rotate and orientate the tool here okay so let's uh, joint four will be a joint here that will be actually in this position will be aligned with uh, sorry not aligned but in this position is horse uh, is horizontal yes and will be in charge of moving this link four here as you can see joint four will move this joint four, uh, link four here and then we have joint five that will move the blue one which is link five and then joint six will move the end effector link which is that one here okay so let's run the simulation and to see how this works to control the joints manually so we have the first joint that is used to orientate the robot arm. Then we have the second and the third joints that will be able, together with the first one, obviously, to uh, control the position of the of the wrist. And then we have joint four, which is moving this link here. Yeah, joint four. And then we have joint five, which is that one. And yeah, and then we have, if we zoom, you will see it, we have joint six moving the end effector and the tool, okay? So this is for this uh, robot here, but now let's move to a different robot, which is a very similar robot indeed, but it's the UR3 robot. It also has six degrees of freedom. And uh, in this case, there's a slight difference that I will mention later, okay? So let's start with the link zero, is that one here, then we have uh, the joint one is the vertical one. Then we have the red link here is the link one, and then we have two horizontal um, two horizontal joints, it's joint two and joint three. And joint two it's in charge of moving and uh, this uh, link here the green one, and then uh, joint three will move the yellow one. And then and now then the difference with respect to the previous robot is that. Joints four and five intersect, but not the sixth joint. Okay, and that makes slightly uh, the inverse kinematic of the robot makes it slightly different. Okay, but um, you, as you will see, you can uh, obviously you can control it as well. Okay, so the idea here is that joint four will move this link for here. Joint five will move this link here, and the last joint will move the end effector okay so let's play the demo and to see and let's see how it works so this is first joint 
this is the second joint, the movement of the second joint. This is the third one, fourth one. This is the fifth one. And then if we have, yeah, and then we have the last one, which will be in charge of controlling the orientation of the tool. Okay. And now to end this video, I would like to show as well a scale robot. This robot here has four uh, joints. Three of them are revolute joints and one prismatic joint. Okay. And here we have the first link, which is link zero. That's the base, it's the fixed one. And then we have two joints, which is joint one and joint two. They are vertical and they are in charge of controlling the XY position of the end effector here. And uh, link, uh, sorry, joint one moves links one, which is that one, and joint two moves link two, which is that thing here. And then we have a prismatic joint here with here a link that will be moving in and out. And then we have a fourth joint, which will be in charge of rotating the end effector, which is this suction pad here. Okay, so let's see how, let's let's run the demo and let's see how it works. Okay, so we have the first two joints will be in charge, as I said, to control the XY position. The third joint will be in charge of controlling the Z position. And the fourth joint will be just simply in charge of controlling the orientation. And this is sometimes useful when you want to insert components. Okay, so uh, in this video, what we have seen is... Uh, Oh, I have prepared demos, a set of demos to help you to identify links and joints in uh, serial robot manipulators. Thank you very much.